In this chapter we're going to procedurally make our door and window frames from the templates that we made previously and we're going to make the panes of glass as well. So we'll start with the window frames and uh, we'll, pull, we'll create a null and uh, again we're going to pull off from our main geometry up here our low res bricks and we'll use sort of the main form here as a template. Let's just maybe bring that over here and we'll call this uh, window frames. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a box because uh, if I just turn on the wireframe we can see that the, um, there's a lot of bricks here. We just want to simplify this down and I'm not going to use the uh, bounds this time because um, I don't need to resize. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cut, use these templates again to cut a hole in this. Um, if I just do that quickly, if we just do a boolean, let's just plug that in and then we'll subtract. Now we just want the windows. Um, now what I want to do actually is um, let's add some nulls here. Let's add a null after this. Let's call this um, windows. So just we know what's out of these branches and let's call this um, door. There we go. So we know which comes out of which. And I want to plug the uh, windows from here into this boolean. Now if I do that you'll see we've just basically cut a hole um, but it's only going as far as the depth of the windows are going. What I wanted, what I'm going to do is actually create a separate control here so I can control the, the depth or how far those cut in there. And the way I'm going to do that actually, let's go back to the box, is I'm going to create a peak. And what a peak sop does, let's just select that to the box, let's tap P, is uh, it moves the points uh, in the direction of the normals and basically stretches, uh, contracts the box inwards. And uh, if I actually do another boolean, here between the original box and this peaked version. Let's make sure this says subtract. Um, if I hit wireframe what you'll see is I now get a box within a box. It's basically hollow. Now if I cut my windows from the hollow one you'll see now that we can see inside. And by adjusting the peak here I can adjust how thick that sort of the window frame is. It gives me a nice control there. Now um, What's nice uh, about this boolean is um, we can actually set this to the second one here. What we can do is we can turn on um, A inside B, I think it is. Let's have a look. Let's add a blast node. And uh, in the blast node, let's remove that group. No, that's not the group I wanted. Um, actually, let's set this the uh, boolean to intersection, which gives us the uh, the windows here. Now, um, with that A inside B, actually, if I do now delete that group, let's have a look at that in relation. What you'll see, it's deleted these sort of front faces for us and left us the frame bit, and that's the bit we're we're interested in. Now, remember the peak here can control the depth of that frame, so that's our, our frame frame width or frame thickness there. Now um, what I'm going to do is um, I want to tidy this up a little bit. We've just created a group from this boolean. Let's just do that. Uh, called A inside B. And if you look it's empty now because we just deleted those faces. So we can tidy up with a group delete node. A group delete node is quite good. You can just set this here, delete unused groups, and it will remove all that, those empty groups that we just don't need. Um, now that we've got our frames, it's quite straightforward. We can add a poly um, extrude node. And uh, with our poly extrude node, we can simply um, extrude them inwards. Now, if you look, that's actually going the wrong way. We're actually extruding out into the gap there. So what I really want to do is just pop in a reverse node before the extrude. There we go. Now we're extruding the frame inwards, which is what we want to do. We don't want to go into the wall. We want to come... Um, into the actual cavity itself. And you must turn on output back so you can get the uh, back of those. If we then make a uh, poly bevel node, we can sort of refine the edges. These are going to eventually be made of wood, so I want a nice soft sort of edge quality. So let's put a little bit of a bevel in, something like that. Maybe a division of two. Let's just have a look at that without the wireframe. That's giving it a nice sort of softish edge quality, which is excellent. Let's recalculate our normals to make sure everything's nice and uh, looks nice. And then I'm going to create a, a UV unwrap. 
just so we have some nice UVs on there. The defaults are pretty good. If you do a quick shade, a UV quick shade, you can actually preview how those look. And look, there you go, they look um, okay, the UVs. Let me just get rid of that. We don't need that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an assemble node. So we can create a name attribute here, um, which I'm going to call um, window frames. And I want to create a group as well. So let's make a group node. And we'll call this uh, window frames. There we go. So I always like to do this. I like to tidy up. I like to uh, create my UVs, my normals, give it a name attribute. The reason we give it a name attribute is so Houdini can see them as separate objects. If I actually just show you that in the spreadsheet, it creates this primitive attribute here called name. And you'll see every primitive has a, a unique name attribute. If they share the same name attribute, they're in the same object. So oh, that's one object. That's uh, another object and so on and so forth. You see these primitives are also in frame zero. So anything that's uh, frame zero will be one object. So this will be frame zero, frame one, frame two, frame three, which is pretty handy. Um, now that we've uh, got the group, we've got the assemble, let's just create our null at the end. So we know what we're connecting to. And uh, we'll just call this uh, window frames out. And then it's easy to find. There we go, let's just... Um, tidy that up with shift L and we have our window frames let's just put this in a net box call that window frames and there we go let's give it a funky color maybe a, a dark purple or something dark blue so we want to see this in situ with the rest of our building so for that we can do a merge and then we can link in our bricks out with our window frames out and we can see them all together here so we'll just give that a second to uh, compile and f loop through all the bricks to give us that soft stony look. And there we go, it didn't take too long. And then we can see our window frames fit nicely within the cavities. And uh, we've got some nice controls there. We can come up to this uh, peak sop and uh, we can make the windows uh, less deep or more deep. Let's see how we can adjust that. Went the wrong way. So doing something like that. And uh, of course, we can come and change the proportion of one of them. So let's just make the uh, windows a bit taller. That's going to take a second while everything calculates for the building. Uh, on a faster computer, this will go a lot quicker because uh, VEX is multi-threaded. There we go. So they've cut a bigger hole there. Um, let's just undo that. If we go back to the original size. Take a second or two. So depending on the uh, power of your machine will be how quick this happens. And you'll see because of the boolean we've cut nice sort of holes and shapes within the bricks there. Excellent. So um, the next thing I want to do is to, to keep everything procedural and working together is to build the glass from these frames. So I'm going to come down to the window frame section here and create another null. And uh, I'm going to call this uh, window glass. So I'm going to pull that off from the uh, extrude here because this is where we ended up with these particular frames. Now I'm going to go to the uh, poly extrude here, if you remember, and I'm going to turn on output front. Now let's do uh, a blast. And what we'll do is we'll delete the uh, front group and we'll turn on delete non-selected. And what you're see if I just template the other one that's kept this inner line of faces um, from our frame and it's that that we're going to build the glass from. So I'm going to do that by using a polyfill node. Now the reason I'm doing it this way you'll see in a sec is um, when we do the polyfill it actually fills those holes in to create the, the, the box that fills in the cavity. But the nice thing about the polyfill node is if we come down, we can turn on patch group. That means it's going to, the new faces it created, it's put into its own group, which are the, those, um, which will become our panes of glass. Let's add another blast and uh, let's delete everything that's not in that new group. So let's select the new group patch and then turn on delete non-selected. And that gives us just the uh, bits that we filled in, the holes that we filled in. Now I only really want um, the back ones really. 
If I turn on primitive numbers, we can see um, that's not going to help us really. So um, this topology is not going to change. You know, if the people, all we're going to do is change the scale of these boxes, but the primitive numbers, the face numbers, are never going to change. So this is one of the few times that I'm quite happy to manually select stuff instead of using groups or procedural rules because I know it's not going to break the system. But you should try and use procedural rules all the time. So I'm going to use a group node again this time to select those points. So we'll call this um, delete me. So it's a group that I want to delete. And I'm going to click on the little uh, uh, the little cursor here, and that will allow me to select components. And I want to delete the front ones, so I'm going to select these front ones using Shift. Maybe you can hold down the space bar to navigate the camera while you're in the tool. And then I'm just going to hit Enter, which puts those front ones in the group. And then we'll use another Blast node to uh, delete that group. So let's select Delete Me. And now we're just left with these back faces, which are facing the right way for us. So we have our little panes of glass there, which is um, pretty cool. Now, what I'm going to do is um, I want to extrude them. So if we do a poly extrude, we can uh, create some thickness to our glass. Let's turn on output back so we get the back side of the glass as well. And uh, what I want to do now is to be able to actually move them, move them um, forwards and backwards. Now here's a slight problem. If I create a transform node and I try and move them, you can see these front ones move correctly, but the side ones don't. I want to move these front ones in the Z and I want to move the side ones in the X. But unfortunately, the one transform node won't let me do that. Um, I could maybe group them up individually, but I'll show you another little trick. What I'm going to do is I'll create a for loop and I'll loop through each one of these at a time. And uh, while I'm doing that loop, then I can do stuff, maybe extrude or other stuff individually per glass. At the moment, this extrude is affecting all of them simultaneously. So how can we distinguish or split them up? Um, well, let's have a look bef before our extrude. Let's go to this blast node. Now, um, after this blast node, I'm actually going to create a normal a normal node and let's turn on change this to point normals and let's turn on the normal display now if we look at the normals here what we can see is these guys are facing the z-axis and these guys are facing the x-axis so if we were to look at the normal values here in fact let's look in the spreadsheet if I right click on the normal node and choose spreadsheet we can see the normal values here let's turn on point numbers so look point zero here point zero we can see he's got 0 in the X and 1 in the Z. Um, that's because it's not facing in the X. And it's the same with this guy. They're basically 0 in the X. If I look at this guy, point 14, you can see he's positive 1 in the X. And if I look at point 10, he's minus 1 in the X. So by looking in the X direction, I can tell which way someone's facing. I can tell if he's facing left, he's facing right, or these guys are facing forwards. I'm using the X because these two uh, are, are opposite each other, whereas these two share the same thing. So that's the condition I want to look at, which is the X um, positive or negative or zero. So how can we do that? Well, we can simply use a switch. Uh, in fact, before we do that, what I want to do is create a four loop. So let's do like we've done before, or four each loop and then we'll do for each uh, connected piece so it'll do through each one of these now there's a slight issue with doing this um, what I'll do is um, I'll do each um, I'll extrude them all outside because they want the same extrusion but I want to loop over them afterwards but refer to um, that normal that we created so let's just pop in the uh, extrude first and have a look at that. So let's just plug these guys in, turn on this bottom node. And um, the way the for each loops, if I turn on a single pass, you'll see we're actually looping through each one of these at a time. All right, there's only one in there at any one time. Now, you'll also notice the normals have been messed up for us. Um, that's because the uh, poly extrude recalculates them for us. Can we actually turn that behavior off? Um, it doesn't really matter whether we can or can't. 
what I want to do is to uh, I need that normal information from here and I need it to come into the loop on the first frame so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename this n attribute n into something else so let's do an attribute rename here and then we'll rename it from n to um, n switch alright because I'm going to refer to this down in this loop so let's put this transform in and we'll look at the last one on the loop so at the moment let's set this to zero what we can see is this works because it moves that one backwards and forwards but if I turn off the single pass on the loop and now try this you'll see it has the same effect of moving everything in the same direction so what I want to do is only have this transform working when um, <coughs> excuse me so when the normal value in X is um, zero so how can we do that well we can use a switch and we can switch between two things let's switch between another transform so this transform will be in our X in our Z so we'll transform Z that's forwards and backwards and this one will be transform X and let's put a value in that and you'll see this one doesn't have an effect because it's not switched so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to tell this switch to read uh, this node here and it's going to read this n switch attribute which is our stored normals if I just have a look at that you'll see that um, it's got our values here of our in fact we're only looking at um, one uh, let's do it on this guy spreadsheet there we go we can see I've got our zeros or our minus ones or our plus ones so basically when it's zero I want here and when it's not zero I want it to pick the other branch and we can do that by writing a point expression here so if we type point and then uh, we come up one for the path of the node we want in this case we want the for each node it's a bit of a mouthful to type uh, and then we want our point number which is zero because we're only getting one thing through the loop at a time and then we want our attribute which will, um, which we called what do we call it um, n switch so n switch and then we give it an index zero it'll always be the zero index for us and there we go so if I look at this uh, z1 you see that only affects those guys and uh, him accidentally and this guy only affects that one because uh, the switch is switching depending on which way the normal is. Now remember we said, uh, we've just put a condition here, what we really want it, so this is when it's zero, it will pick the first input, and true, it will pick the second input. What we want to do is actually say not equal to zero. So it's not equal to zero, so there we go. Now when we move it, we're just moving the front ones. So we've got our condition here, this is just returning the attribute, so zero will pick the first input, one will pick the second, but if we actually actually put a condition in saying well when this is not equal to zero in other words when it's minus or plus then it will switch to this other input so what we can see is this is now just moving the front ones but this is moving both of those left and right that's qu not quite what we want this first one's working but this second one isn't what we really need to do is do another switch here depending on whether that um, x direction is positive or negative so the positive one will move this guy and the negative one will move that one so let's add another switch let's create another copy of the transform and uh, on this switch in fact we can basically copy the same expression so I'm just going to control C this and on this one paste it in but we'll say this one when it's uh, less than zero so it's a negative number so now if we move that one it moves the first guy and if we move the second one which is not the negative number it moves the second one so it's the same expression when it's not zero when it's less than zero so in other words negative is one switch positive is another whereas this one here was when it's not zero so in other words any value except for zero so that what well, that's why it moved both of them so with uh, a couple of switches here we can actually use some logic and uh, we can control these two front ones the left one and the right one independently 
Now what I really want to do is just have one control and they all move the same amount because they should all be embedded in the window frame the same amount. And that's very easy without check expression. So again I can select this guy, select that channel, right click, copy parameter. And then in this one we can paste it here in the X, paste relative reference. Don't forget to delete any spurious numbers that appear. And then this guy again, paste relative references. Get rid of any numbers that might appear. And now when we move that first one, they all move, except for this one on the right. That's this one here. This one wants to be a negative number, so we'll just put a minus in front of that channel. So put a minus here in front of that expression, just to flip the direction. And now if we just adjust those front ones, then they all move by the same amount. So now we have all our panes of glass. We've got these, uh, this control that we can move them in and out of the window frame. Let's see that in relation to the window frame. I'll just pop that in, template the window frames here, and then we can just adjust the glass. So let's move that a bit forwards so we've got um, in the frame there, so it's quite at the front. Cool, so we've built some controls, and again, everything's procedural. So um, what I mean by that is if I go back to my window and change the window width and height, you'll see the frames, the glass, and the holes in the building all generate. So again, we want to uh, tidy this up. If I middle click, we've got some groups and some attributes that need removing. So we've seen the attribute delete node here. So we can just click on the drop down and remove the attributes we don't want. I don't want end switch and I don't want class. Uh, we'll do a group delete this time to remove any spurious or empty groups. So remove any empty groups here and then we'll remove delete me, extrude and patch. So now we've just got our one attribute. Um, then what we want to do is do our UV unwrap. And again you can do a quick shade if you want to check that out. Just to make sure, yep, those are UV'd nicely. So we'll, again, we'll create our assemble node. And we'll call this uh, window glass. Then we'll create our group node. And we'll call this uh, window glass again. Let's just tidy that up. Let's copy that name and then we'll make our null so we can easily connect to it elsewhere in Houdini. So window glass out and then we'll put everything in another net box which we'll call window glass. And uh, let's give this a glassy color, something like a dark green. And there we go. And again, we can add that null into our merge and we can see everything all connected together, the glass inside the frame, inside the uh, nice sort of stony bricks which we could affect with the noise. There we go, it's all coming together. We'll see that the uh, glass fits the frame perfectly there. See our window glass fits our frame rather nicely. Excellent. So um, the next thing to do is to pretty much repeat that process for the door. Now before we do that actually, um, I just want to show you something about the for loop here. Now um, you'll notice that um, in my expressions here, I typed in the full path to that node. If you do that in a for loop, you will not be able to compile it. And uh, let me just show you an easier way and the way I'm going to be making these from now on. Let's create a compile block and see if this works. By the way, you can't put a poly extrude inside your compile block as well, because look, it has that flag that says non-compilable. We did mention that. So let me put this little uh, one at the top here. And let's put this little one at the bottom. And it does give us an error. And it gives an error because you've got internally referenced compile node. Uh, uh, what that means is you've got a path that it doesn't like. It doesn't like paths in these expressions. So how do you fix that? Well, it's um, quite straightforward. What you need to do is go to the gear icon. So I've got two expressions on both these switches. I'll start with switch two. So we'll go to the gear icon and we'll, and we'll choose add spare input. 
and that creates a spare input here. Now I like to use this quite a lot actually because what you do is you drag the node that you want to write in your command here. We wrote our for each begin so we'll drag that as the spare input here and the clue is if you hold your cursor over spare input look it tells you you can refer to this in expressions such as minus one. So in our expression we don't need to write that full path we can just call this minus one. This I find a lot easier than typing because here I can just type minus one instead of that path and I can just fill out the path here. Now if you create a second and third spare input you can refer to them as minus one, minus two, minus three etc and you can have as many as you want. It just say, and It's really handy if you're writing lots of these expressions in the same node because then you can just type minus one all the time instead of retyping silly named nodes and things. So I actually prefer to use this a lot because it's much easier but it's essential if you want it to compile. Now I have to do the same for the other switch because again that's got the expression in there. So let's create our spare input, let's drag our node in to get the path and then we can just change that path to minus one and you'll see instantly we do that the error goes away because um, the, it can only compile if you don't have paths in your expressions you have to use the spare inputs and there we go it did that um, fairly quickly there it just jumped back into action so that's important you must remember to do that as well as connecting up all these loose inputs on the outside to get your compiled for each loops to work now we're getting an error here, we've got some mismatch attributes, that's because we didn't calculate nice new normals on our glass here. So let's just create a normal node, calculate some normals, and there we go, we've got all the same attributes coming into the merge. And you'll see we've got our groups, we've got our bricks, our window frames, our window glass, Ooh, and we have an extruded front group, where's that coming from? That's not from there, where did I not delete the groups from? Aha, here we go, window frames outwards, let's do a, a group delete. Let's just remove that. We don't need that Windows extruded front group. There we go. So if we come down here, it's all nice and tidy. We've only got the groups we want. Bricks, window frames, and window glass. And we've got our name attribute telling us that everything is separate. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is uh, create the door frame. And we can pretty much do that in the same way. So uh, to do the door frame, we can pretty much steal the whole window frame network. So I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to left click and drag the uh, actual net box. And you'll see that's copied the entire network. So instead of calling it window frames, let's get rid of the S and call this door. Let's rename the null as well to uh, door frame. And uh, let's have a look what's going on. So remember, we have this guy. We did our box. We did our boolean. Our peak gives us control over the thickness of the frame. And then we did another Boolean here. Uh, except this time we don't want to use the windows, we want to use the door. So let's plug in the door null instead. And there we go, we end up with our doll, with our door. And you see there's a slight issue with this, being that uh, we can see this L-shaped wedge. Now let's see why that's happening. If I click on, if I template, if I look at my original box here, and I template the peak, you can see the peak doesn't sit on the floor, it's given this gap and that's what we're missing on the boolean. What I really need to do actually is um, this peaked box, let's add another transform after the peak. What I really need to do is move that down as you can see to the floor so it cuts that off. Now remember we typed an expression in the transform node which makes sure something sits on the grid and that was typing minus dollar y min and the y here. So in your transform node, select the Y, type minus dollar Y min, and that will guarantee that box will sit on the floor, regardless of how you change it with the peak, see? And this will allow us to control the thickness of the door frame, the same as we did the windows. And now we get the right kind of shape without that funny L in there. So let me template that transform and uh, the original box, you can see how we're, the shape we're getting there. Excellent. Let's check the rest of this works. So A inside B still works. That gives us the uh, frame that we want. Then we can uh, delete any empty groups. That's right. Then we reversed it so we could extrude it inwards. Then we uh, beveled it. Then we created normals, created UVs. Then in our assemble node here, we'll call this door frame. See, that was nice and easy. We could copy and paste that. So window frames again. Let's change this to... Uh, door frame. Uh, that's getting rid of the uh, 
group again and then we've got our door frames out door frame out at the bottom here and we can rename that's what we've already named the uh, netbox there and then we can simply connect our door frame to everything else and we can check it in situ make sure it fits and uh, if we do a quick shade again we can just make sure all the UVs are working on everything there we go so we've got nice UVs on everything we've built so far and as you know it's all procedural because obviously if I change the size of the bricks or the uh, door or anything else everything's going to update because it's all uh, linked and related to everything else excellent so um, the next step is to do the door now the door is going to be slightly different because I actually want to model this as planks um, so we can do a nice simulation on the wooden planks so what we'll do is we'll build again off our door frame so let's have a look at that <laughs> 